Now, if you've ever seen a spreadsheet or used a program such as Excel, then you're probably pretty familiar with tables. And after all, all that tables are is simply a grid arranged into columns and rows. You can use them to organize and emphasize certain pieces of information. More than that, you can use tables to do complex page layout operations that almost rival expensive professional publishing programs like Adobe InDesign. Before we identify the different parts of a table, let's go ahead and insert one into our publication. You'll find tables under the Insert tab in the Tables group. And this is what the Table button looks like. Go ahead and click on the Table button, and you'll see a bunch of boxes here at the top. The easiest way to insert a table is to drag your mouse over the rows and columns until you have the amount that you want. So you can see that it highlights here. And we're going to create a 7x3 table. So as you can see, we've dragged our mouse to make a table that has 7 columns and 3 rows, or 7x3. And as we drag, the table also appears in our publication. You'll just click to add the table. Now that we have our table, let's identify the parts. Each box that you see in a table is called a cell. There are 21 cells in our table here. The rows go from top to bottom. There are three rows. And rows go horizontally across the screen. Columns go from left to right. There are seven columns in our table. Columns are vertical. So now that we've identified the parts of a table, let's take a look at other ways in which we can add them. One way is using the Insert Table dialog. So let me delete what we have here. And once again, we're going to add a table, but this time we're going to use a different method. Go back to the Insert tab, click the Table button, and select Insert Table rather than dragging across the squares. And you can see this dialog box launches in the center of our screen. From here, we can select the number of rows and columns. In this example, we're going to add six columns and two rows. So click OK. And then, just like that, our table appears. Now if you want to add text to a table, that's as easy as clicking on a cell and then typing. You'll be able to change any attributes of that text too, and even apply a word art style which add effects to the text. You'll be able to find quick styles in the Tables Design tab that appears when you add a table. Now just like in any ordinary publication, you can choose whether to center text within a cell or whether to align it right or left, or toward the top or bottom. Under your Table Tools, click on Layout, and then go to the Alignment group. So these are all the different buttons you'll use for aligning your text. As you can see, you can align text to the left, right, or center of a cell. You can also align it at the top, middle, or bottom of a cell. You can also change text direction, add hyphenation, or adjust the margins within individual cells. And you should be familiar with these buttons from earlier in this course. They work the same way that they do in text boxes, except that they're for individual cells. Now whenever you create or select a table, the Table Tools will open automatically over the Design and Layout tabs in the toolbar. It allows you to easily apply table styles, borders, shading attributes, and more. The Design tab, which looks like this, lets you customize the look and appearance of your table. Let's look at the Table Formats group here. You can format your table using one of the pre-designed publisher formats. You can click on the downward arrow to see all of the formats available. And these formats will establish the look and feel of your table. You can also click on the Fill button to add a color to your table. And we've gone ahead and added a gray fill to ours. Now you do have to make sure that you've selected the entire table and not just a single cell if you're trying to fill color to the whole table. In the Borders group, you can use border styles and add borders to rows and columns to customize the look of your table. Now let's move over here and click on the Layout tab. The Layout tab, when associated with the Table Tools, allows you to easily insert rows and columns and to format text and objects within cells. You can also create new margins for your cells. Now what about selecting cells, rows, and columns? Selecting cells, rows, and columns in Publisher 2013 is easy. To select a cell, click within the cell so that the mouse cursor is blinking. Go to the Layout tab and then to the Table group and choose Select, Select Cell, and you can see our cell is now selected. To select a row, click in the first cell in the row, and then go to Select, Select Row. To select a column, click the first cell in the column, 
and then go to Select, Select Column. Now if you want to adjust the width of an individual column, position your mouse over the edge of the desired column, and then click and drag it to the desired width. You can see our column's now been widened. If you want to add rows or columns, there are two ways to do this. Select a cell, row, or column, then go to the Layout tab, and choose an option from the Rows and Columns group. You can see you have different options for how to insert rows and columns. You can also delete cells, rows, and columns by right-clicking inside a cell, and then in the menu, select Delete. It'll give you choices here, so just select the appropriate one and click it to delete. Now let's talk about merging cells and splitting cells. To merge cells, drag your mouse over the cells while holding the left mouse button to select them. As you can see here, we have the first two selected. Under the Layout tab, go to the Merge group and select Merge Cells. Now our two cells have merged together. If you decide you don't want it merged or if you have cells you want to split, click on the Split Cell button. If you want to, you can also add diagonal lines through cells. When you do this, you can type in each section of the cell above and below the diagonal line. To do this, select a cell, a group of cells, or the entire table, go to the Layout tab, and then go over here to Diagonals. Choose to either Divide Down or Divide Up. We'll choose Down. As you can see here in our table, we can now type both above and below the diagonal line. Now to delete a table, there's two ways to do this in Publisher. You can select any cell in the table, and then click the Delete button on the Layout tab and click Delete Table. Or you can right click and select Delete, Delete Table. You could also right click and select Delete Object. This way we'll remove the table from your publication just as it would any other object such as a photo or word. Document.